the Senate notes that the federal government in its fight against corruption in order to plug the presumed highly proliferated leakages, wastages, slippages surrounding the first subsidy as well as in an attempt to end controversial subsidy regime on May 11, 2016 announced increase in first subsidy price from 87 Naira to between 135 and 145 Naira per liter. Aware that the, uh, at the inauguration of the present government on May 29, 2023, the president took a bold step to announce a total removal of the first subsidy. Noting that the scheme has increasingly favored the rich more than the poor. Recognizes that the federal government recognizes that the federal government's interest in exiting the subsidy regime was in line with its policy to reduce cost of governance and desire to eliminate corruption, corrupt practices surrounding the scheme through diversion and smuggling of the products into border countries as well as introduce fair competition in the downstream sector. <coughs> Informed that an NPCL within the period of subsidy, a subsidy exit attempt, substituted the term subsidy with under recovery without any recourse to the National Assembly or supervision by any other arm of the government. The Senate observed that while an MPCL within 10 years, 2006 and 2015, claimed that about 170 billion as under recovery. The same NNPCL within 13 months, January 2018 to January 2019, claimed a whopping sum of 843.121 billion naira as under recovery. Consigned that the then Petroleum Product Pricing Regulatory Agency, PPPRA, published in its website figures that contradicted NMP, NMPCL's daily under recovery claims within the same period. Also concerned that the federal government appropriated 1.42 trillion and 4.3 trillion naira for petrol subsidy in 2021 and 2022, respectively, while 3.6 trillion was appropriated for petrol subsidy for six months ending June 2023. Worried that. And then PCLs arbitrarily and unsupervised direct deductions from the country's crude oil revenue without recourse to any established, any enabling law, contravenes section 86, section 89, 1C and D, 1D of the 1999 constitution as amended and does not speak well of the good intentions of the federal government, especially in the fight against corruption. And also worried that the uninvestigated and alarming cost of under-recovery slash direct deductions of an NPCL without necessary checks has led to great misunderstanding of government's good intentions on subsidy removal. The Senate accordingly resolved to constitute an ad hoc committee to holistically investigate all controversies surrounding subsidy and the under recovery regime. Two, investigate the group G, the group chief executive officer GCEO of NNPCL to bring to brief the Senate on its under recovery expenditures and the company's position on subsidy removal of the present administration. Mandate the committee on downstream petroleum sector when constituted to constantly monitor, scrutinize, approve midstream and downstream spending of NLPCL. 
hand, the fourth but not the least, or is the NNPCL in conjunction with some major international oil companies, IOCs, in Nigeria to form three different consortiums and build three refineries, one each of the consortium to, to stabilize our oil market, give value to our currency, and stabilize our economy. First, the issue of subsidy, okay, is so annoying because we have all along been subsidizing the neighboring countries. Not only subsidizing Nigeria, we've been subsidizing the neighboring countries. Most of the uh, a significant percentage of the fuel subsidized in Nigeria finds its ways to neighboring countries such as Cameroon, Niger, and other neighboring countries. So it is really painful that we have all along subsidized neighboring countries, when in essence we cannot adequately take care of ourselves. Having said that, Mr. Chairman, Mr. President, sir, more worrisome is the fact that a lot, a significant percentage of the, more, of the fund being used for this subsidy is borrowed. All along was borrowed. You don't borrow money, you don't borrow funds to subsidize. You borrow money for pro productive purposes, especially revenue generating projects. Okay? And that has contributed partially to where we are today, okay? Because of the large sums of money being borrowed to fund subsidy. Nigeria has itself today been subjected to what we call debt peonage system. Debt peonage system is a system, is a state of perpetual indebtedness. That is where we have been all along, and we need to regulate ourselves out of that. Okay? I want to commend the president of the country for the bold step he has taken to remove the subsidy. But more importantly, I also want to commend him for trying to redistribute our wealth. Because it's like taking wealth from a few hands to the generator of Nigerians. Having said that, Mr. President, the utilization of the savings arising from the removal of the subsidy is equally very important. And that is where our oversight function comes to play. Okay? Those monies recovered or that are going to be received uh, re from uh, the discontinuance of fuel subsidy must be used to revive some of the ailing companies in Nigeria, in particular, Ajakuta Steel Complex, Itakwe Iron Ore in Kogi State, Oshogo Iron, 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 Iron Steel Rolling Mill, Casina Steel Rolling Mill, Aba Textiles, okay? Casina Rolling Mill, Aba Textiles, and some other textile companies in the north, Ariwa Textiles, for example. Those monies should be used appropriately to fund those projects, revive those projects. Those projects will create a lot of employment opportunities. They will create a lot of revenue for the government. They will also create, they also have potentials for foreign exchange earnings. It is also important that when the subsidy is removed, we have to look at the palliatives to cushion the effect of subsidy removal. Mr. President, much as we're going to make a lot of gain from subsidy removal. We also have to look at the sufferings of our people today. Commuters are the final end users of petrol and they are suffering most. If you want to commute from one small place to another small place now, you have to pay heavily for that. But Mr. President, I must take our mind back to some of the problems that gave rise to what we are suffering today is what is known as turnaround maintenance. A situation where NMPC and Minister of Petroleum started the issue of turnaround maintenance and started giving contracts to companies that did not build the refineries to come and maintain the refineries. I don't know how that vocabulary of turnaround maintenance started because that is where our problem started. A company will build a refinery, you will leave that company that built the refinery, you will appoint another company to come and maintain the refinery. I don't know where that is done all over the world. So that is where this problem started. <clears throat> and all our refineries were shut down. Today we can't boast of any refinery that is producing. Mr. President, my knowledge of crude is that even in villages, in some states where they do bunkering, Mr. President, they even refine this crude along the road. 
So that means that to refine the product is not a very difficult thing. Why is it that we don't even have a law mandating IOCs, all the oil companies in Nigeria, to at least refine 30% of what they produce? How can you produce crude in Nigeria? You will export the same crude to another country, they will refine the same crude you produce in Nigeria, then you go and buy it at a very exorbitant rate. This is the essence of this refinery. So I believe that the cartel that are involved in this refinery should be brought to book because it's a very serious matter. Now, the NMPC or the, the Minister of Petroleum over the years have been budgeting astronomical figures for fuel subsidy. This is what is causing the problem. Even the, the budget of 2023, beginning from January 1 to June 30, is 3 point something trillion. So assuming that that is allowed, it means that we are going to have about 7 trillion for this year on fuel subsidy. Mr. President, I think that that issue has to be looked into. In conclusion, Mr. President, I believe that there is need to look at the entire oil subsidy thing because I don't think it is going well for the people of this country. The cartels must be brought to book. The NMPC themselves that are doing this issue of under recovery we also have to look at it. That is why I'm saying that this motion has come at a very auspicious time. And we must utilize the opportunity of this motion to dig, dig deep into the problems of oil subsidy in Nigeria. Thank you, Mr. President. The issue of fuel subsidy has been not only the elephant in the room, but the big elephant in the room that has constituted a cock in the wheel of our developmental aspirations and bringing dividends of democracy to the death steps of our constituents, especially against the backdrop of the huge amount of resources that we deploy in the name of subsidizing fuel. And as rightly alluded to by the previous speakers, as a result of the high cost of fuel in neighboring countries of Cameroon, Chad, Niger Republic, and my constituency happens to be neighboring Chad Republic, we are aware that a lot of smuggling activities goes on. These neighboring countries virtually defend on the fuel produced in Nigeria. So all along, we are subsidizing neighboring countries to the detriment of Nigerian citizens, our constituents. And distinguished senators, I can vividly recall that in the seventh assembly, this issue of fuel subsidy has been investigated thoroughly by the seventh assembly and report has been submitted to the relevant authorities and in the course of the investigation a lot of things that are not supposed to be were unveiled and government should have right from the word go at that period in time have withdrawn the issue of subsidy because of what the investigation has unveiled. But subsequent governments do not have the, the political will to withdraw the subsidy. And we thank this government for taking the bull by the horn and gathering all the political will and clout to withdraw the subsidy in the interest of Nigerians. And now we are saving a lot of money which we can use to deploy for the purpose of our bridging our infrastructure needs. And in conclusion, my humble advice is that in view of the hardship unleashed on Nigerians as a result of the withdrawal of fuel subsidy, there is a need for the government to be responsible and responsive to the yearnings and sufferings of Nigerians to come up with ways and means of giving suko 
and cushioning the effect of the fuel subsidy withdrawal on Nigerians. Once